Greetings and welcome to No BS Baking. Firstly, I'd like to apologize to everybody. I've been a late, little late getting my videos out, but I've had some personal things to take care of around here. Um, but I hope to get back on track and get a video out every week. Now, also, for those of you who have requested, um, you know, can you do a video on this? And I've made some commitments within my videos that I'm going to do that these will be all upcoming and much, much more. So bear with me. Now, today what I'm going to do is I want to talk a little bit about um, changing your formulation. Now, I've given some formulation that's out there or, so, or somebody's gone out and grabbed a formula off, offline and they're baking with it and ultimately they're just not getting it sorted. Their bread's not coming out proper. And so ultimately what I say, well, send the formula to me. So when they send the recipe or formula, uh, I take a look at it and I can see that it's they varied it from the original formulation. They want to put a little bit of bran in it or they want to put some grains in it. Um, they've uh, adjusted maybe um, a few other little components with inside there. Now, I want to make it clear that when you are modifying formulation, there's a number of things that you need to take into consideration. And so for those of you who are looking to take a standard formulation, and move it into more of the healthier grain-based breads. There's some things that you need to know, and that's what we're going to cover off today. When it comes to adding grains and seeds and nuts into your bread, Baker's got all sorts of options to consider. You know, here I've just listed a few. I've covered off a few of the hard grains covered up a few of the cereals and of course there is such a broad range of nuts and seeds that you can incorporate into your bread to make lovely multi-grain breads. So as a general rule of thumb, as your white flour decreases inside your recipe and you increase the amount of seeds and grains and these types of things into your dough, mix times come down. Gluten forming proteins are reduced. Thusly, gas retention is generally reduced and the strength of your overall product can be reduced. Now this is subject to the amount of grains that you introduce into your product and of course how much uh, you are um, eliminating white flour out of the recipe and substituting with whole wheat or whatever. Now further to this, You've got to remember that certain type, the whole wheat is an example, or bran, you have to get your absorption up. You have to get a, usually use a little bit higher water content, and ultimately your staling rate can increase, and I'll explain why. Okay, so generally you have to figure out what your plan is going to be. Is plan number one going to be that you just you want to throw all your ingredients into the mixer bowl, you want to mix them all up, and in a one-step type of a process. Well, down below, you can see that you're definitely gonna be looking at reducing your mix times. You should probably also incorporate a slightly slower uh, speed mix at the very beginning to get everything incorporated there, and you will probably be looking at increasing water. Now, the other option is to pre-soak some grains. So if you soak your grains, uh, you know, depending on how long you soak them, you still are going to need to reduce your mix time and you will need some additional low speed mix generally at the very, very beginning to get them nicely incorporated in that. Now, if you really want soft grains inside your dough, uh, you can soak your grains for a lot longer, but remember the mixing process beats everything up pretty good. Now ultimately, depending on how long you've soaked these types of things, your grains could uh, become mush through the mixing cycle. So in this type of a situation where you've got heavily soaked, nice soft, moisture laden grains and seeds, you don't want to mix them, you want to fold them into your dough after it's basically been developed. There is no mixing. If you want to keep the some type of integrity to those seeds and nuts, fold them into the dough um, gently, maybe a, a very low speed mix just to incorporate them all in there without smashing up these already softened grains and seeds.
So why would you want to soak grains anyway? Well, the first one is you don't want to knock out a tooth. You know, a hard grain inside a loaf of bread can be quite a surprise when you're eating it in a sandwich and all of a sudden, clunk, crunch, you've uh, knocked out a filling or something like that. So soaking softens the grains as we know. Now it makes them easier to digest for the body and it plumps them up so they don't need to steal or leach water from the dough. I'll explain this a little bit further. And it also contributes to extending the shelf life and reducing the speed of staling. Now when you're using grains and seeds or even dehydrated fruits in your recipe, remember these are moisture loving and water loving. They will, they will try to suck water from that you've put, added into your dough to equalize the, um, the overall dough system. So dr using dried or n not hydrated grains and these types of things, they will leach water from inside your dough, ultimately making it much drier right off the get-go. So in order to kind of end up in and around that 38% uh, moisture in your product after you finished baking it, which is kind of an industry standard, um, you need to soak your grains. Standard white bread, or most breads in general, will lose between 2 and 4% uh, um, of their weight immediately after baking, just through the cooling process. Now, if you have unpackaged bread, you just put it into your bread box, it's one of these crispy breads or whatever, you can expect to lose between 3 to 5% of its weight daily through staling. Wrap bread loses a little bit less, approximately 1%. However, the moisture inside the crumb continues to migrate out to the crust. So the internals of your bread continue to dry and the crust and the external parts of your bread um, become softer and chewier. As the package is opened and closed and opened and closed, that moisture eventually gets out into the air. And so um, even at 1% of moisture loss, the staling process continues internally uh, it's just a little bit more um, sneaky on how it's doing it. Now, when you're using multigrains and these types of things, as I've indicated here with the more of this yellow line, your product will appear to stale quicker. And this is to do with the grains leaching moisture from the internals of your product. When you're using nuts or seeds, or grains, coarse grains inside your uh, bread, remember, mix times are always reduced. So, as I mentioned, grains, nuts, seeds are abrasive. And that is the reason why mix times are reduced. So you've built your gluten structure up, you've got it really nicely formed, it's holding all the gas nice, and then ultimately you start incorporating these abrasive grains and everything in there and it will it will break down and start to um, literally slice up the gluten protein that you have in there um, creating a much weaker product so always keep that in mind as your white flour decreases and your grains increase your mix times are reduced So, just to say it one more time, less white flour, more water. Less white flour, less mix time. Less white flour, less gluten that's going to be available. The less gluten, the less strength and tolerance you're going to have. And ultimately, the less strength and tolerance that you've got, the less volume that you'll be working with. Now, you can fix all of this stuff real quick, real easy talked about in this my other videos it's used by the commercial industry specifically for these types of breads and that is vital wheat gluten how much water is the right amount of water well let's take a little look here now obviously if you fill your container right up over top that's not the correct way to do it you don't want to use too little water as I've shown in this example when you're soaking grains and seeds, the best way to do it is to 
fill your product or your seeds or grains or whatever up to a certain level and just put enough water to cover everything inside the container. So how long should I soak? It depends on what you're soaking. It depends on the incorporation process that you've decided. And it depends on the, what crumb characteristics that you want. You know, for hard, raw grains, it's recommended that you soak overnight. But even a few hours is better than nothing in baking. For nuts, it ranges from around 20 minutes to a couple hours, and even overnight in the fridge for hard varieties. When you plan to soak overnight, regardless of what you're soaking, or for extended periods, say more than two hours, make sure you use room temperature to cool water for soaking. The objective is not to get the fermentation process going. You're trying to hydrate these grains, hydrate these nuts, uh, so that they don't steal and leach water from your dough. You're not trying to start the fermentation process, which ultimately uh, can spoil some seeds, nuts, and even grains if it's left for too long of periods. Thank you very much for watching the video. I hope you learned a little bit of something out of this one. I always try to give a little bit of information in there that's a little different from some of the other websites. But if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to drop me a line. I'd be happy to answer any of your baking questions. And remember, please give me a like and a subscribe uh, down below. It really, really helps with this YouTube stuff, and especially when you're starting off like I am. So uh, thank you. We'll see you again next time on No BS Baking.